Welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. My name's James. Today, what we're gonna be looking at is B-Days. I'm going to show you the very first toilet B-Day integration that I've ever seen. This one is part of the Vitra Aquacare range. I'm gonna show you the ins and outs of how they work and how they are compliant with water regulations in the UK. I'm also then going to install it in our studio on a fully running system. We'll install the hot and cold feeds, the concealed cistern, the full waste pipe, so you know how to install one of these in your own home. Plus, I'll show you how to set up the flush on this rimless toilet B-Day and why why I think these could well be the future. All the tools that I use in this video you can find in our Amazon store. There'll be links below at the end of the video. Anyway, let's get on with the video guys. Hold tight. Also, pop over to our website and the interactive house to learn more about the plumbing in your home. So then guys, this is the unit that we've got to work with. Now, you've seen us install Vitra toilets in the past. You've got six fixing points, all of which are adjustable, two at the top, Two at the back that links straight through to the toilet itself, to the B-Day toilet, meaning that it's gonna be really firmly fixed. It's not gonna move anywhere. And then two floor plate fixings down there as well. But what's really interesting about this, this particular one that we're looking at here, this particular toilet, is the fact that we've got a valve on the side with hot and cold water going to it that we can use, adjust, whilst we're on it. Now, one thing you need to remember is that this valve is set so the water temperature never goes above 38 degrees C. You do not want to get scolded, especially there. A lot of people, when it comes to B-Days, they seem to worry that there's electrical connections, things like that. You don't have to worry about this. There's no electrical connections with these. And also the other thing that people worry about is backwash. So um, what we mean by that is the feed, that what's in here somehow getting into our cold mains. Now we've got an air gap inside the feed pipe for the B-Day attachment, and that stops us from having to worry about that, okay? That's there already. We've got a rimless bowl here, so you don't get like those little bits where you can, you know, get bacteria growing. But also, this toilet is coated in a special ceramic. We've got a special ceramic coating on this that means that bacteria doesn't grow on it as well. So what you're doing, you're installing something that really, really addresses quite a lot of issues. So let's have a look at the B-Day feed side of things, how that particularly works, how we can adjust things, and how this little toilet B-Day works, and then we can get on with actually installing it. So at the back of the toilet, we've got extra pipes that you're not usually gonna have on a toilet that's normal, because obviously they're not a B-Day. Now, effectively, I think you can sort of figure out this for yourself, because we've got a red one, and a blue one. Now this is our hot and cold inlet that goes into the mixer valve that's on the side here. Now the mixed outlet is this pipe here. We've got a nice little sheath on the end of that protecting it and also a little rubber o-ring that we're gonna use later. And that's gonna connect to this pipe here on the back which will feed straight through to the B-Day where the water comes out. You can see at the back here, we've got our standard flush pipe going down and then also our locking four inch out that we know well from the other Vitra videos of the toilets that we've installed already. While we're here, it's good for you guys to see that we've got these massive big old studs here that go straight through into the toilet and stop that falling down. This is all sort of integrated. You've seen it already guys, once they're installed, literally they don't move anywhere. This is a bit like where the magic happens. This nozzle for a start here, I just want you to sort of take a look at this. This can pull off and we can adjust the flush going round the outside of the bowl. And we can do that by removing this diffuser here, but you can also see the feed through, double O rings on everything as well so we don't get any leaks. Um, but also while we're here, I wanna show you that this small nozzle here can be directed in a different direction because water pressures can be different. You don't want this to fly out and leave the toilet. That can go back in there and I'll talk to you more about the diffuser and the RIM-X system that's on these toilets. Later on when we've got it installed, I'll show you what it actually does. Also, this is where our integrated air brake is. Our air brake can go back down there and feed into the bowl. And the great thing is, is that all of this is covered up by the seat that we're gonna put on right at the end of this video. So this is the really great thing. We've got this valve on here. There's a mixer valve, there's our on and off, and then we're down for hot and up for colder. Now remember what I said as well, this valve cannot go over 38 degrees. With products like this, I could sort of try and make it sound complicated or anything like that, but that's impossible to do with this because it's so simple. So why don't I install it now in front of you? Let's get it over into the corner, get it all installed. This will be an exact real life install for exactly what you're gonna come up with when you come to fit one of these beasts. And I'll talk you through some of the things that I'm thinking about, some of the thought processes that I'm doing as I'm installing one of these lovely toilet B-Days from Vitra. 
So let's get going. I like to get a few things added onto the frame before we get started. So you can see here how easy it is for me to clip on the saw pipe. And you'll also notice that that can orientate round in a few different directions. We can also pop our small valve assembly in at the top because as you know, we can turn on and off everything from the top on these. So close. Hey, baby! Pending any near-death experiences, we can now get the inlet sorted out and ready for when we second fix later on. All we need to do is remove this orange bung here and then pop our inlet in. As you can see, it recedes nicely into that square housing, which means that from underneath, you can do up a locking nut to make sure it's all held in. I like the fact here that the thread on this is brass. Uh, always makes a massive difference to doing everything up later on. It couldn't be easier getting the valve on underneath. It's got a rubber O-ring on it, as you can see there. That pops in there just do that up hand tight and if you want you can nip that up with a set of grips in a minute you can now pop the flexible braided hose on here but this is just for keeping it out of the way for now because when we actually fill up and get all this going we'll blast some water through here before putting it on the fill valve just to make sure there's no debris in the pipe once we've done that pop our cover plate on just to stop anything falling into the cistern while we're doing the rest of the job and another thing i'd recommend as well is just pop your hand into the cistern too to make sure there's no other bits in there that you might need later on during the this install and that popped on there just to protect those two and then we know also later on when we're doing our hole cuts exactly where they need to be but if we do look at the back now we've got a four inch pipe just down there at the back and that's going to join up quite nicely in a minute once we're ready with just a straight fitting now very faintly on the actual body of our cistern you'll see a very faint line here, it says one meter and an arrow. So now we use a tape measure to mark out where our one meter line will be from the finished floor level. Once we've got that, we can use the adjustable feet to adjust the frame up and down. So we know then that the one meter mark on the cistern is one meter from the finished floor level. It's very easy to do, but it's definitely a point of the job that you should spend a few minutes doing to make sure that you get this bit right. Remember to use a spirit level across the top and also on the side to make sure that you get your frame nice and level as well. So now we're at the point where we're fixing our back plates on and getting all them in. So let me get those back plates on now as well. Let's thread them up. Ugh. A nice little hack here for you as well. You're going to be cutting this studding off to the right length sooner or later. So it doesn't matter if you pop the studding into the chuck of a drill. So then you can drill it through, put the locking nut on the back of that and also the plate. It just saves you a little bit of time. Otherwise you'll be winding forever. Adjust the forward and back height by using a magnetic spirit level like I am here and you'll be able to get this in the Amazon store. And then you'll know how far in or out to have your studs. Also, while you're here, mark the holes for your screws. And then we can just wind these through just to make sure they're nipped. And then they are locked in position. Now you can drill all your marked holes, including the ones into the floor, making sure that you get really good fixings. If you followed the instructions properly, and once you've done that, the frame will be attached to the wall and the wall will fall down before the frame comes off. There you go, that bit's done. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. What usually happens when you see B-Days uh, in Europe or abroad, what they'll tend to do is they'll tend to have the hot and cold tap isolators on the wall surface mounted next to the B-Day or the toilet. They also do this for basins and stuff like that. Um, and then you'll have a flexible braided hose going up to that, fully visible. Not saying anything about abroad, but in the UK, I think you guys know who you're installing these sorts of things. That's not really acceptable. We don't like to see braided hoses going up to our plumbing or anything like that. We like to try and hide that a little bit more in the UK. So this is what I would recommend you do. Um, just grab yourself a little three mil metal drill bit. Just drill a pilot hole through the bottom part of the frame here and then put yourself a 15 mil double clip or if you want a sort of single clip each side, you can. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. I know that the valve for this toilet is going to be on this side here. So that's why I'm putting it on that side just down there like that. What I'll be able to do is I'll then have isolators just like this. And this is all about if anything ever goes wrong or if a filter gets blocked or something like that, you're able to turn it off easily. You'll be able to see it. And what we're going to do is we've got these isolators here. We're going to turn them so they're face down. So when the toilet is in, you'll be able to get a small stubby slotted screwdriver underneath and then turn the supply off. And then after that, you've got removable nuts underneath for these that will allow you to get the toilet off the wall. This is obviously the bit you've all been waiting for, guys. Now, one thing I'd say about the pipe that I've done here is I'd probably pop one clip on that long bit of pipe, the cold feed going up to the top. Also, you'll see I've used a standard system connector at the top with a valve on it, but that's not needed because the valve, as you know, 
know is inbuilt into the system for access from the front. So all the prep work is done. We've got our cold feed coming in, teeing up here and going into the top. We've got the cold feed coming round also just down to here to our little valve that we're gonna be able to access once this job is fully finished. And then we've got the hot coming around here as well. Those two are gonna be mixing that lovely little thermostatic valve that doesn't go above 38 degrees. So you can wash yourselves whenever you like. So all we need to do now is if you're gonna have the tilers come in, this would get hardy backered like the toilet I did last time. In fact, that toilet's just next door, still being used today. That's another Vitra toilet that we fitted. Anyway, let's get on with getting this measured up and getting this covered over the top. At this point as well, you want to pressure test and also blow through any debris out into a bucket using the flexible hose to make sure that the pipe work up to the fill valve is nice and clear. Ah, measuring. The bit that matters the most and people seem to take notice of the least. You've got to make sure you get this right, guys, especially on a panel like this. If you get this wrong, you will ruin a whole panel. It's a lot easier to do if you're using tiles because obviously your measurements are in smaller denominations. But look how I'm measuring out here and I'll recheck all my measurements to make sure I've got them right. Also, Vitra have a measurements guide that's inside your instructions, so you can use that as well. I've used the measurement guide and my own way and always end up with good results. I use my Bosch oscillating tool that you'll be able to find in the Amazon store to cut these out. Really, really handy for this. They don't have to be exact exact because they're all going to get covered up by the toilet. But just look at how nicely that goes on there. And now you can really see what we're aiming at for this install. Right, so now I've got our lovely wall up on here. What we need to do now is cut this box back flush and then we can pop our flush arrangement and our flush plate in. Uh, we'll do that now because then all our cut dust goes down to here to the next area where we're going to be working, which will be putting in our flush pipe, feed pipe to the toilet and also our waste pipe out of the toilet. We'll be getting them cut to the right lengths. Also, we'll be getting our studs cut. We'll be getting our pipes on and finally fixing this B-Day toilet to the wall. Pull out our back plate like so. You'll just see here into the back, you've got this little receiver here and that receiver there. That's where these two go. And then these two hooks get hooked on to our flush here. And they can just sit that up into the receiver, just like that. And then that's now ready for us to be able to do our flush. Pop the back plate in just like that. And now you can push in these two side clamp receivers. Now what they want to do is be about a millimeter to two millimeters behind the finished wall surface. Once you've done that, you put the two flush rods in and make sure that they're sticking out about 25 millimeters from the finished wall face. There's handy sections that you can snap off the back of the plastic thread to get it to the right length, or you can use a hacksaw to cut it. Once you've done that, put the black receiving plate over the top and screw the whole assembly together using the two Phillips head screws provided. Flap down the little clip retainers to make sure that the flush rods stay upright. And then you can clip your decorative flush plate over the top and later fix it with some side screws. We pull out our flush cap that's been protecting anything going down our flush and we pull out our cap here for our four inch waist out. So the first thing we want to do is push this in like so and then get a pencil and make a mark around where it goes into the wall. We'll do the same with the four inch. Pop a little mark just there like so. Now pop on your flush cone rubber and insert that into the flush inlet on the back of the toilet. Do the same with the waste pipe then use a straight edge to mark where the back of the toilet meets the waste pipe and the flush pipe. Then measure the difference between this mark and this mark, plus about three mil onto that measurement, and that's how much you want to take off the end. It's a really simple way of doing it. So we know on here, we've got quite a lot to take off because we're going from this mark here to that mark there. So that there will be there and we'll cut here. Okay, so that's how that works. Make your cuts and it always helps to file a small chamfer on the ends as well so they go nice and snugly into the fitting. Now we're ready to measure and cut our studs and hang the toilet bidet. So you've got this small lug on here just like that and you can just pop this on and actually get it so it nips up. Nice and tight and you can do the same for this other one just here. And then later, when we come to do these up, we can actually just push these on and then we use this tool that's been supplied with the toilet to do our tightening. Now, the good thing about these is look, look, they stay there. You can almost leave these in after the toilet's been fitted. So when we push the studding on, what's gonna happen is this is gonna push into here like so. Now, rather than having it meet right in the middle there, I'd like it to come just back a bit here. 
But also take note, you've got a lot of play on the stud work here to know exactly how far you want to pull this. But I'm going to cut that to about 35 millimeters. I know that 35 millimeters is going to allow me to screw this up a bit tighter or loosen it off depending on how this tightens up in a minute. Now I cut away the studs at the 35 mil mark and then use a ruler to make sure that the center of the receiver will meet the center of the grub screw on the toilet clamp. Right, so simple job now. Feed our pipes through the side and look how easy we're gonna make this for ourselves when it comes to doing those final connections. Assemble the valve as per instructions, making sure that the nylon spacer is on there before the nut. Then you can do the nut up nice and lightly. Don't over tighten it. Now I'd say that's all that needs. Now we'll connect our mixed feed to the B-Day outlet. This does require a bit of imagination because you've got quite long hoses. In the past, I've gaffer taped them to the bottom of the toilet, but also you can coil them up nice and neatly so they don't kink, and then use a tie wrap just to wrap them in the coil and tuck them up under the toilet out of sight. We will obviously have a little bit of jiggery pokery in a minute. I mean, look at this, guys. You know what I'm getting at here, guys. This is gonna be completely hidden, but also accessible. I mean, how important is that? And now, guess what? We can actually pressure test all our fittings here in front of us before we even put the toilet bidet on the wall. Make sure that we've got no leaks. Make sure this is off. So I can just make sure that's off now. And there we go, that's on. Oh, see? You always forget one, don't you? And that's why we do that. <laughs> There we go, now that's good. Right, so now we just dry up that little bit there. We can now pop this onto the wall and tighten all this up. It's all about trying to hide our pipes out of the way so when we push everything on, it doesn't get too involved. Now, you can see there's a little bit of a, maybe we can have a potential kink here. So just a little bit of work around here just to make sure that doesn't happen. So to recap guys, always be careful about kinks. As you can see there on the cold feed, that's pretty much about as much as I'd like that to be kinked. What I do afterwards usually is just get your finger and thumb and try and squeeze the kink out a little bit. Try and sort of redirection the hose so it doesn't kink so much. Now we use the inbuilt tool to tighten the toilet back up to the wall and you'll get it really, really tight and close. It's just not gonna go anywhere. And like I said, the great thing about these toilets is you can actually leave those Allen key inserts in because they will not fall out, they have a retainer so if anyone needs to take the toilet bidet out in the future, they'll be able to do it. Now we can pop on the bidet handle and actually test operation. Right then guys, the water's on, everything's working. What I'm gonna do firstly is show you just the bidet function. So I've done this one and this is personal preference. I'd like people who are sat on the toilet to be able to see which way's cold and which way's hot. You can obviously have this round here if you like. So fully cold is here and look, if we lean this back, there we go, we've got water coming out. Now, what can happen is, is the air brake there can then drain back into the toilet, and that's how it works. I can swing it all the way around to hot. And if I just put my hand on there, that's coming out lovely, that's just perfect temperature. 38 degrees, man. That is what you're looking for. I cannot wait to fit one of these in my home. I'm definitely gonna use a V-Day from now on. Yeah, so there we go, that's that's it. It's working fine, we've got no leaks. We can, we can get to everything. If there's a problem, you can't see it. I mean, what a perfect installation. I'm really, really, really pleased with how this has gone. So if I just flush this now like this. To be honest, that is pretty good. We've got a really good flush there. But the great thing about these is, if we've got a problem with the flush, or if we've got a problem with the spout, or we actually want to change the direction of that spout, I can have it firing out into my face if I want. You can basically pop this piece out like so. And in the back here, we've got a diffuser. And this diffuser, depending on which orientation it's in, will affect how much water comes out on that flush and how far it will go around the rim. Looking closely at it here, you can pull the diffuser out and to increase the flush by one increment, rotate it so the larger hole is at the bottom. And if that's not enough, you can take the diffuser out altogether for a maximum flush. Bear in mind, we shouldn't have to do this every time. It's only to make sure that water goes all the way around underneath that rimless flush that we've got on this toilet bidet. So that's exactly how you want it now. Oh mate, that is so good. Look at that, how, how, how cool. 
cool is that? <laughs> the toilet seat supplied, I really, really liked, mainly because it's got metal fixings for it. The screws that go down through the porcelain are metal and not plastic, and that makes a huge difference. And we've got a nice plastic decorative shroud that goes over all of the bidet workings. And I think you'll agree here that it looks absolutely brilliant when it's finished. So I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video all about how to install this fantastic toilet slash bidet. It's great to find a solution that means you can have a bidet and toilet function all in one unit, saving loads of space. These are also going to save you a fortune in toilet roll as well. And I do just think they're more hygienic and probably the way forward when it comes to toilet and bathroom hygiene in the UK. This is the first of three videos I'm going to be doing about their bidet series. So hit the subscribe button, comment below what you think about these bidets, and I'll see you in the next Plumber Parts video. Remember to hold tight.